So welcome everyone to the April 18th, 2024 SUNY Broom Community College Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, we'll start with the first action items, which are uh, two um, emeritus status recommendations, and I will stand. Madam Chair, can you, uh, you'll have to have a motion. Yeah, after. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I got it. Yeah. All right, first I need a motion. I'm going to move this. You're going to move it. Thank you very much. Would anyone like to stop? Oh, okay. Okay, Margaret, thank you very much. All right, now I'm going to stand. <laughs> All right, and good evening, everyone, and welcome. <clears throat> SUNY Broome Community College Board of Trustees resolution for Professor Suzanne Mayer. Whereas Suzanne Mayer worked tirelessly throughout her 50 years in service to achieve a standard of excellence in the dental hygiene department and in SUNY Broome Community College as a whole. And whereas Suzanne Mayer was well-loved and respected teacher and mentor for the SUNY Broom Dental Hygiene faculty and students. And whereas Suzanne Mayer worked tirelessly as chair of the Dental Hygiene Curriculum Committee and assisted in numerous successful accreditation, documentation, and site visits. And whereas Suzanne Mayer served as a mentor of for new faculty. And whereas Suzanne Mayer was an active member of the Faculty Association and always worked for the betterment of the faculty and the college as a whole. And be it therefore resolved that the Dental Hygiene Department, the Health Science Division, and SUNY Broom Community College thank Suzanne Mayer for her dedicated service and wish her the very best in future endeavors. And be it further resolved that the chairperson, faculty, and staff of the Dental Hygiene Department recommend that Suzanne Mayer be granted the status of Professor Emeritus with all of its privileges and be it further resolved that Suzanne Mayer be granted the status of Professor Emeritus the SUNY Broome Community College with all its privileges. I hereby certify that the foregoing is true and correct at the Counterton Chairperson for the Board. So we have the resolution and, and a nice certificate to send to her, and we will send that and give her our best wishes. What a nice career, 15 years. <laughs> That's impressive. All right, and then we have Professor Mansfield. Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> well, come right up next to me, please. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> All right. SUNY Broome Community College Board of Trustees Resolution for Professor Kenneth C. Mansfield, Jr. Whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield, Jr. served with diligence and dedication during his 33 years of service as professor in the Computer Science Department. And whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield, Jr. has been a respected teacher, mentor, and a prolific co-author of 22 college textbooks on technology, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. served as a co-advisor to the Computer Club and the Computer Forensics Club for 26 years, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield proposed and developed numerous new CST courses, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. obtained grants and developed and managed a server room to support the educational requirements of multiple CST courses, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. provided mentoring and guidance to full-time faculty and adjuncts, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. also served the college as the night operator of the computer center, programmer, and senior programmer, assistant director, and director of the computer center, and interim dean of the STEM division, and whereas Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. expected and brought student work to the highest academic standards, and be it there resolved that the Computer Science Department and staff thank Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. for his services and unending commitment to excellence in education at SUNY Broome and wish him the very best in his future endeavors. And be it further resolved that Kenneth C. Mansfield Jr. be granted the status of Professor Emeritus of SUNY Broome Community College with all of its privileges. I hereby certify that the foregoing is true and correct. Kathy Patterson, Chairperson for SUNY Broome. Thank you. I think I have your. I do. 
Yes. All right. Thank you very much. All right. We'll move on to point um, O, Dr. Hawkins. Yes. Good, good uh, afternoon, or this evening, um, trustees and guests. I um, wanted to first of all begin by my report by uh, acknowledging that April is Community College Month. Um, so it is a time for us to be focused and our attention on our sector of higher education and celebrate the good work that many of the community colleges are doing throughout the country uh, during the month of April. <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of attending um, the annual meeting of the American Association of Community Colleges uh, two weeks ago in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, as a first time chief, uh, chief executive officer, um, I was invited to be a member of the new President's Academy um, and presented at the Hale and Fa Farewell Luncheon, recognizing new community college presidents mm -hmm. while saying thank you to retiring community college presidents. Um, there were a number of sessions on DEI, student success, new financial models, economic mobility, um, and artificial intelligence. Um, also at the time, I presented a session with two other new presidents on the first year strategies for making diversity, equity, and inclusion, and belonging central to the transformation of our institutions. Um, the second item that I'd like to share with you is, um, at the time that I wrote the report, uh, the legislative session uh, was to have ended yesterday. Uh, the slight modification in the report, the, the session did not end yesterday, um, but uh, largely in, in due to large parts of our efforts, the message for the need to increase um, operating uh, aid was received by Albany. Um, we're still waiting to find out exactly if the message resulted in uh, the additional funding uh, that we requested. Um, but over and over, lawmakers and staffers noted that they were aware of this initiative. Uh, they were aware of the advocacy campaign. They had heard from many trustees and presidents. Um, and if we fall short this semester, or sorry, this year, um, that we have set the groundwork for uh, hopefully being successful next year. Um, that this advocacy really models the advocacy that has been the floor was was agreed to. Um, so they're assuming that if the, the pattern hold, holds true next year, we should be able to see at least some level of, of increase in our operating from the state. Um, also, there was a bit of legislation that was added to increase the board of trustees. Um, by adding one faculty member to all of the co community college boards. Um, that did not receive the required support for it to move forward. Um, both the, the community college trustees and the community college presidents uh, proposed um, opposition to this for a variety of reasons, uh, the least of being uh, conflicts of interest of having uh, members who are receiving financial compensation from the, a community college to serve on the board of that college. So um, that, that effort um, is not moving forward. Um, we continue to work on our budget um, with um, adding transparency to our process. We have um, uh, had uh, Vice President Sullivan go out to a variety of settings to explain the trends of our budget as well as the forecast for our budget. Um, and uh, in addition to making presentations to the Board of Trustees, we made presentations to a group of supervisors, to uh, the College Senate, as well as um, the uh, strategic planning steering committee so that we have a, an understanding of uh, the financial challenges that, that lie ahead uh, for us. Um, we're still waiting to finalize the date for the meeting with the county executive and the legislature. Um, I had the opportunity to join engineering student and student trustee Alejandro Chavaria Gonzalez uh, in Albany when he received the 2024 All New York Academic Award and first team recognition from Phi Theta Kappa. So congratulations. <laughs> That was in the morning, um, and then in the afternoon, Alejandro was joined by nursing student Brandy Banches, 
um, to receive the Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence. So we have two wonderful, outstanding students that were recognized. They were very busy last Thursday. Um, there are other events that are listed in my report. Um, I had an opportunity to sit with a group of uh, uh, toddlers to four-year-olds from our BC Center on International Children's Book Day. Um, I got to read Llama Llama, It's My Mama. Or <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, upcoming are several alumni reunions and mixers and open houses. Um, and there was a request in closing, there was a request for what items would we need in, uh, in order to furnish the Hornet Hope Center. So at your places, you'll see a list of the items that we are still in need if you um, have access to resources or would like to consider um, helping us replenish some of our, our much needed um, items we would be greatly appreciative. And with that, that concludes my recording. Thanks, Tom. The wish list is in the in your packet. Um, I would just say I was uh, privileged to attend the grand opening and the ribbon cutting, and it was amazing to see all the excitement. And um, it was impressive to see how many of the uh, students were there, and many um, uh, shared some stories about their own experience with it. And um, you will all remember Al from um, last year's uh, student trustee and. She was there and, and talked a lot about how it's been so nice for her to be able to do something for others when people did things for her. It's a nice way to pay forward. So it just was great. I can't say enough about it. So if you have or can um, provide any, it would be great. Great. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, um, right here. Is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> uh, so, speak as the president of the uh, faculty senate. Right, we uh, had our had a meeting last week. We have one final meeting later on. Um, given that the chancellor's awards uh, uh, brought up in Dr. Hawkins' report, notice the chancellor's awards for uh, faculty and staff have just been announced. Uh, faculty senate was responsible for the. Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching. Uh, we just got the word from SUNY yesterday that our two candidates for that were, were successful. Um, I just want to give the names because uh, we're going to uh, surprise them in their offices and uh, bring their nominators with them and, and just sort of let them know. Uh, so we'll be doing that early next week. Um, okay. Uh, this semester, Faculty Senate, we have voted on seven proposed uh, policies and procedures which came to us from administration credit prior learning repeating courses student chosen name pronoun and gender honorary for guest speakers dual or second degrees change of major and adding and dropping a class the last three of those um with the vote ended 15 minutes ago um and uh, i believe dr kelly was pleased to know that the Early results from the uh, exit polling uh, should be uh, they will all be passing. Right? I, will, I will be sending you tomorrow uh, our list. There were a couple questions involved with it, but I don't think there's anything uh, too significant there. Uh, this semester, we have also passed and will be reviewing several faculty uh, council for community colleges resolutions. Um, one of these was passed earlier in the semester about uh, credit for prior learning, and we will be getting another back. The FCCC meeting just concluded at Corning. I was there, and um, coincidentally, uh, funding and AI sort of seemed to dominate the uh, dominate the agendas. We received several um, interesting. Uh, uh, slideshows and presentations from the provost and several other uh, people and I'll be sharing uh, nuggets with that with both the faculty and uh, Dr. Kelly and Dr. Hawkins. Sorry, once, once we, I just got the slides this afternoon, so I'll be reviewing them and I'll just pass them along to see what you think. Um, so today was a busy day. The vote concluded. Uh, we are also working with college senate student assembly and academic leadership to provide a convocation. And just today, 
uh, Sasha Loft House, Marin Maruli, and I conducted uh, Your Voice Matters uh, Zoom conversation, which was fairly well attended, and we we it was just basically a listening thing. What do what do we what do folks want to see with convocation, and uh, how are we going to set things up going forward? Uh, we uh, we agreed that we would like to work through the president's office and through shared governance to really get this back. Uh, on track, uh, we agreed that uh, we would like participation in the planning and uh, carrying out of convocation to be uh, to be inclusive of the entire campus community. But there's some uh, challenges there, which were raised by Sasha. That students are here for two years, and sometimes you have to plan far in advance for these for these events. But we're going to overcome this. This is a particular challenge. Uh, we have uh, we have a great commitment uh, to reviving this activity uh, and restoring it to its uh, to its former glory, and to being really creative with how we pull it off. Given that there's obviously going to be budget constraints, but we have a lot of creativity right here on the campus. A lot of uh, people doing wonderful stuff, and I think we could make this a very successful activity. So that was a very successful Your Voice Matters meeting today. Um, next is curriculum committee. Uh, the faculty senate will be working with them. They will be revising their bylaws and they ask for our input. So I will be sitting on their committee to revise their bylaws. We also talked about uh, the review of starting learning, uh, student learning outcomes uh, by them and trying to uh, be a lot more proactive with how we review the, the writing of student learning outcomes and then sort of uh, closing the loop on, on the assessment portion of it and trying to see what the faculty can really do to uh, reinvigorate that process as, as much as we can. We'll obviously be working with Dr. Kelly's office uh, as, we, as we do that. We, I, I think there's a general consensus we need to do more with student learning assessment. And it really takes takes strides there, and faculty will need to take responsibility uh, for their part for our part in that. Um, we've also been discussing AI at faculty senate uh, in some detail, both the possibilities and the challenges of it. And speaking as an English professor, one of the big challenges is plagiarism. Uh, just last week, I received yet another one, of which. <laughs> on through AI, I didn't have to bring up plagiarism because it was completely off topic. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we need to do something with it. Those of us who are assessing student work, uh, it's pretty clear a lot of it is, some of it is coming through AI. And I think part of it is not malice on the part of students. It's just not really knowing how to use the tool uh, that's there and not knowing exactly what it is. So I think we need to do more about that. One of the FCC C resolutions that will come forward will be asking for uh, training about AI, not just for faculty and staff, but also for students. Um, I think we need to do more, not only as an institution, but as a system to get out in front of this because students are gonna, I, I really worry about the students are going to think that they use the tool accurately to plagiarize and that could be, that could be problems. Uh, so that's something that we're very eager to work on. Um, finally, uh, I have one more year we, uh, in this position. We're holding elections for the chair elect uh, coming up. And in this regard, I'd really like to thank uh, Laura here, who helped us get the uh, get support for a part time position with shared governance. Uh, she'll be working with uh, Aaron Maruli and myself uh, to do a lot of the uh, Behind the scenes work that's so crucial to this, like sending the emails, uh, sending out the minutes, uh, and also especially conducting the elections. So I'd like to thank Laura for her assistance with that. Uh, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Andrew? All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to uh, academic affairs, Dr. Kelly. Thanks. I just have a couple of things to point out before we have a real quick presentation, but. Um, we have plenty of things in the report, but after submitting the report, um, our 
geez, what is it? Our electric vehicle participated in the 2024 Green Grand Prix in Watkins Glen, and they came in first in class for a modified electrical, electric vehicle. Uh, Gary D. Jamak, I never say his name right. <laughs> Gary D. D, D Jamak, D. Giacomo, got it. Um, and students participated in that. So um, excited for them. And then I know we've talked a lot before in the past about our admin business administration AS degree and the transfer agreements that they've made with the best business schools in the state, including BU. We'll have an official signing later on this month or next month, but they did get an agreement with Baruch at the Zicklin School of Business, which is really a, a feather in their cap, a very, very well-known business school. They're the first community college um, to establish a guaranteed transfer program with Zicklin. Um, and the only requirement is they complete their business administration degree here, 2.5 GPA, and they're guaranteed admission into Baruch's Zicklin School of Management. So really excited about that. That's a big deal. And hopefully you've seen our uh, mobile enrollment vehicle. Lots of people have said they've seen it driving around. It's been to a lot of events, and it will actually be this Sunday at the Rumble Ponies game. There's a STEAM STEM day at the Rumble Ponies event. So Dr. Marty Achola has learned to drive the van. She's been out <laughs> practicing today, and she, will, there, she must have liked it so much that she might still be driving it. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, she will be there, and we're excited about that. The other great news that we're happy to share this month is some of the progress that our nursing program has made. They've made significant progress over the last three to four years in the program. So I've asked Dr. Um, McKay to come and talk, Michelle McKay to come up and talk a little bit about some of the accomplishments of the nursing program. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for having me tonight. So I just wanted to um, share with you some of our enrollment trends over the last few semesters. When um, I came here in fall of 2021, we were suffering greatly from the COVID pandemic and we saw some loss of students. And over the last um, two falls, from 22 to 23, we've increased our enrollment in the fall semester for our 105, which is our first nursing course. Of course, when you look at these numbers, freshmen, um, are the lighter blue, the darker blue in the middle are seniors. So it takes a semester, um, an academic year for those to catch up. So you wouldn't necessarily see that in the increased enrollment till this fall. So we have 75 current um, seniors that were in the program in the fall. And then continuing in to the spring, um, we have kept our 75 that should be graduating in May, pending no uh, unforeseen circumstances are 72. And we've seen a lot of growth in our spring enrollment also because of the addition of our ADN 198, which is our LPN and paramedic transition program. So really excited about that. This has um, been a really great effort between the college faculty and students and the community. So what this does is allows LPNs and paramedics to take one nursing course that replaces their first year. They get credit for prior learning. It's a four credit course. It replaces the 14 credits of nursing. And then we're giving them 10 credits of PLA and they can move right into their senior year. So we currently have 21 students in that first cohort. They're doing well. Um, some of them will tell you it's a little more work than they thought it would be, but we're starting them off and preparing them through this course for some of the rigors of the senior courses. And the majority of those, probably two thirds of that class, will be moving into the senior class in the fall, which will further bump up our numbers for our graduates next May. So we're really excited about that. And Alejandro, I didn't want you to be the only person that was seen for the Sydney Chancellor's Award, but Brandy Banches was our nursing student that won the SUNY Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence. She's been a tremendous, amazing student. She carries a full load. She is a mom of three with one on the way. And she also tutors and she's class president. And she just does, um, she's just amazing. Gonna be a great nurse out there soon. She'll graduate in May. And then Stephen Rathbun is another one of our seniors who's graduating. He got the um, Vanguard Award, which is the award for non-traditional by gender 
career technical field um, student. So he will be receiving his award next Thursday in the afternoon through um, soon Albany and the NET conference. So we're really excited for both these students. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have some great faculty achievements too. Um, our one of our newer professors, Holly Farewell, retains a part-time position with Guthrie Packer, and her and her team got selected to do a presentation at a national nursing conference in Denver in May. This is through the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, and it's on high fidelity simulation that she did with her fellow colleague, um, nurse educators there. She's a clinical educator at Packer and um, Neurocritical Care. And she actually, Holly's been a, um, one of our newer faculty members, been tremendous. She's helped develop some of our simulations for our students, one of which we rolled out this spring that is um, just very, very well received by the students and getting great feedback from the students and what they're learning about that. And then Dr. Denisa Tolovic is going to be presenting at the SUNY Conference on Instruction and Technology, CIT, at UB in May. And she's presenting on an assignment she has as part of one of her nursing labs, evoking empathy in nursing students through personal exploration and performing as patients with a specific mental disorder. And that's her specialty. She is a psych mental health nurse practitioner, so she's done a great job. And that is a great, um, just a great show for the wonderful faculty we have in our nursing program. A little more highlights, um, our spring 2023 NCLEX scores, um, we tended to um, go up and down in this program in the past. We've had some down slides, but I'm pleased to announce our 2023 NCLEX scores were 88.89%. So we, um, you know, going down isn't always bad because it makes you put together that plan of what you need to do to improve things. So we we're on a great trajectory. And from the numbers we're seeing from some of the standard, standardized testing we do right now, I can see our students are on a um, pretty good track. I think they can maintain those. I gave them a little bit of a challenge when I met met with them for them to develop their NCLEX study plan. And I said, I know you can do it. You can either ex um, meet or exceed what your classmates last year did. And they all looked at me like, can we? And I'm like, yeah, you can. So we're really excited um, for those scores. Again, we've been <clears throat> very blessed with faculty recruitment. I can say that, you know, We've had a um, couple open full time lines, and our clinical sim coordinator, and um, we have had interest in those. Our adjunct faculty has remained strong. We have a lot of um, great former graduates who have come back to teach for us and are just doing a really great job. So we're really excited about that. We've been recipients of two SUNY High Needs grants within the last two and a half years, both of which have helped with our simulation needs. We've um, been able to replace outdated equipment with some newer equipment, um, really exciting new simulators that run on um, RF and not Wi-Fi. So with our Wi-Fi ones, we constantly lost connection and we'd be in the middle of a um, simulation or lab um, class with students in the simulator would just die and it wasn't supposed to die it was supposed to keep ticking so we're really excited about the new ones because they're RF and they stay connected um, through this grant we've also been able to fund faculty training and simulation and it's um, we're doing this in conjunction with the interprofessional sim center at BU Decker College of Nursing um, we build a tremendous partnership with them all of our students Nursing students every semester for, since last fall now are going to BU once a semester for a high fidelity simulation experience and great feedback. The students um, love it, would like more of it, and we'd like to give them more. Just need to keep working on um, some of our some of our renovation needs here to um, keep that project going. And. That's an simulation. 
and just some upcoming projects and events. We've been working on redoing our curriculum. It um, has not been looked at. You know, we we keep up, but it really needed a major revamping. It was started in 2018, um, got waylaid by COVID. So we ramped it up to try to move this forward in the summer of 2022. And we are really um, doing well. We're, we're close to where we need to be to get this to through the college approval and then on to state ed and SUNY approval. So we're really excited about that. Faculty are embracing it. Um, with all the new faculty, we had to do like a reorientation to all of them about what this plan was. So that's going well. Um, We've been working with the tutoring center here on campus. We're going to look at um, an SI supplemental instruction model for our students. Our classes are large, um, and this would be a great model. And you know, we're looking at some professional tutors. We did a little outreach um, to some of our uh, graduate programs in the area. And we've got some graduate students that be very interested in helping us with this also as coming in as a professional tutor with their um, baccalaureate degree, which will give them a little extra boost um, payment-wise. So we're excited about that. And last but not least, we have a big accreditation visit coming up in September, 24th through the 26th. We've been preparing for that. Um, faculty have been working on the self-study, so they've been very busy. So they've been keeping up with all the enrollment growth and um, the curriculum development and getting their parts done for the ASIN self-study report. And I just want to say it really, it's um, a lot of great stuff going on, a lot of great teamwork, and we couldn't um, we couldn't do it without all the tremendous support we get from the community and from our clinical partners and um, our educational partners too. So that's my presentation. Any questions? Questions for Michelle? It's really been rewarding to work with Michelle and um, Kelly. And um, we were uh, Trustee Orband and Trustee Newman and I were at a dinner this week, and, and um, one of the foundation leaders in the community was there and spoke very eloquently about the progress that's been made at the college by increasing the nursing school size and how meaningful um, that is in our community. So. Um, we have worked tirelessly. And I know I'm biased, but keep keep working. <laughs> <laughs> we need everyone we can get. But it really has been tremendous. So I hope you feel that sense of pride. It's great. We've done a great job. So. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? That concludes Thank my you. report. Thanks. Great. Thank you. All right. Student assembly update. Alejandro. Hello. So Hello. first, <laughs> thank thank you for uh, congratulating us. I really enjoy. A chance to represent SUNY Broome and all these spaces, and I love yeah. meeting other students, such as Brandy, who is such an amazing person and has given so much to this campus. And at the ceremony, about ten of us who received the PTK medal also received the Chancellor's Award, and it was funny uh, when a, a university student had to ask me what the other medal was for. Uh, it was kind of funny that I could tell the universities were a little jealous that the community college yeah. uh, were getting some attention, which is awesome. It's great. Then, so some quick updates <clears throat> that just a reminder that student assembly is super active through our campus committee, such as food uh policy committee, student activities, different ways that we contribute to our campus. Our petition to run is open until tomorrow. So after tomorrow, everyone who is planning to be a part of student assembly will do their their hold their campaigns, and then elections will happen, and then we'll know who will be the new e board and the senators. So that'll be very interesting, and really excited to have people who are interested in, in the college. And then a few of us uh, assembly members we're going to attend the student assembly, the SUNY student assembly spring conference this weekend, and we're. Excited to present a resolution and get to meet more uh, student assembly members from other schools. Everyone there is uh, so interested in students and success, and it's a very nice space to be in. And we always make good connections there. And we've also been very diligent about attending as many Dino students uh, search committee meetings as we can. And 
giving our feedback when possible. So we're we're trying to be as active as we can, and we're getting ready for the semester to end and for things to move on. So it's it's coming real well. It's great. We got a lot going on. So awesome. Any questions for Alan? I want to know where you're going next year. <laughs> Not sure yet. Just answer the same question. Well, yeah. I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, BCC Foundation Report. Kathy Williams. Hi. Um, the financial report is in your packet, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, things are continuing to go well for us. There's also a lot of information about our spring um, fundraising campaigns and uh, a couple of things I just wanted to bring up. I know Dr. Hawkins had mentioned um, alumni reunion weekend is going to be held next weekend, next Friday and Saturday. Uh, we are able to partner with the open house being on campus so our uh, alumni can come back and get the full academic review that a lot of them like to go through and take a look at um, how the academics have changed since they were uh, in school here. I did want to put a pitch out because a lot of my faculty and staff friends are in the room tonight that um, Friday night of the reunion from 5.30 to 7.30, we have a mixer for our alumni come and we have um, retirees that come, but I really would love to encourage, it's free, it's got great appetizers, and um, there are more recent graduates attending the reunion and coming, so we would love to see as many of you that want to come or just pop in, uh, let us know. Um, we'd love to host you uh, because our alumni make relationships with you, not with the <coughs> mechanics of the institution. So um, we're happy to welcome you to that. Um, I'm just going to say it again because, wow, um, this is Absolutely. our uh, spring magazine. And I uh, want to say early metrics just so. Um, what we are tracking on um, our um, digital magazine is hosted on a separate um, digital platform. And the views are up 60% already. And that is because um, we partner with all of our friends across campus. Everybody shares all of the digital information on social. And then every single person that is in this magazine is tagged and sharing it with their home. Um, networks as well. So we're just thrilled by it. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you can help us find other people <clears throat> in the future. And one of the things that we think has helped to make this so successful is a transition to show our alumni working in careers. And it's also used as an enrollment tool. And I just want to say the team that we have in place, which certainly includes one of the best writers that I've ever met and worked with, Elizabeth Costanzo Stewart, Matt Evers, photography, Absolutely. Blackwell, social media, Gary's been a tremendous help. And um, it's just, it's a phenomenal publication and we're getting a lot of feedback about it. So um, share when you see it out on social media. Um, I did want to let you know that um, we are deadline for incoming students. This would be incoming freshmen uh, to apply for scholarships is tomorrow. And our applicants um, look pretty good and we've got most of our buckets full of uh, candidates for which to select. On May 8th is when we are going to be awarding our continuing student scholarships. It's an event that we host at the ICE Center. I would encourage you to come. It's a wonderful evening. There could be anywhere from five to six hundred people in the high center. It's a lot of our students who get recognized. And the thing that really is beautiful about that event is we have many of our donors that come, people that set up the scholarships. Um, we also have faculty who do a lot of the presentations. Um, but our students bring their families, their friends, their grandparents, their children. And it is just a wonderful evening. We have at least an attendee who would welcome the opportunity for you to join us. And that is May 8th. And it starts at 5 30. And it's just, I think, outside of um, commencement, the second largest event that we hold on campus for recognition. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I did just want to say, Suzanne Meyer worked here 50 years. And she's an amazing woman. We had the opportunity to. 
um, profile during the magazine. And I just think it's just a remarkable accomplishment. And that's wonderful. We want job to have. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. Are you looking for volunteers to help with? Scholarship award night. Oh, so there was a pitch that went out to <laughs> campus. I think we did get we got five volunteers <laughs> from campus uh, people, and I don't know how many more we need. But if you're interested, please just contact the office uh, foundation at suny.edu, and we'll get you some and the snacks. Feed them, and they will come. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I think you had a plant in the crowd, right? <laughs> 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 All right, any questions? Yeah, All right, facilities update, Dave Lugaikis. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you don't mind, I'm going to stay seated because I still can't see out of my right eye, and this will help me uh, sure. reference my report. So. Yep. Uh, all right, construction on both the uh, the library and business HVAC project is uh, continuing, as well as the photo lab. In fact, we had Dr. Hawkins at, at the photo lab uh, <laughs> relocation project this morning. Uh, the HVAC projects will be completed in June, and the photography lab, even though it says August 2024, will be completed well in advance of that, although we are experiencing, experiencing some delays in getting some of the material, including doors, but we still expect that to be done before the fall semester starts. Uh, and also the good news is, as you know, and I've spoken to the lack of building permits or approval, of those, uh, we finally got our last building permit approved for the Student Center West Gym HVAC project, and we will coordinate with the contractors uh, to begin the construction of that project relatively soon. Um, I, I mentioned Dr. Hawkins uh, visited the photography lab this morning. He also walked through the gymnasium with us, both the Baldwin Gym, the West Gym, and the dance studio. Uh, the floors in those three locations will be redone, sanded down, redone, and paint put down uh, in both the West Gym and the Baldwin Gym. Um, and we expect that work to be done over the course of the next few months. Um, this past week on Monday, Holt Architects who is working on our mini master plan, uh, which will also recommend a location or provide information to allow our executive team to make recommend, uh, a recommendation as to where we would like to uh, locate our one-stop shop. That meeting was held this past Monday. It went very well. They have followed up with some additional information and gotten it out to the, the executive team. So over the next few weeks, we will begin uh, continue to refine that work and uh, ultimately uh, get a recommendation from executive council as to uh, where the one-stop shop would be located, along with perhaps a student success center and other, other amenities. Um, we are also having uh, uh, Janice Anderson, one of our local architects, do some work for us uh, exploring the possibility of upgrading and potentially expanding the BC Center. Uh, and that would be for competition of a grant that is uh, being uh, programmed by the uh, dormitory authority. Uh, so that work will look at, as I said, an upgrading of the BC Center, but also the addition of a, another classroom and the addition of a sensory room um, to bring it up to, you know, present day standards. And it'll probably make it one of the better uh, child care centers in certainly in the immediate, immediate area and hopefully uh, across New York State. Um, we are looking at and Michael Sullivan has already approved the contract, but we haven't, haven't gotten approval from the team yet, but we're looking at bringing a, a junior level hockey team to the SUNY Groom Ice Center. And for those of you who are familiar with hockey, uh, the juniors are generally in the 17 to 21, 22 age group. Uh, most of the time they're out of high school, but what they're looking to do is either uh, go to a D1 school, Division I hockey school, or end up potentially being drafted by the NHL. So this is really good hockey. I think this is a great opportunity for us at the at the SUNY Room Ice Center and for the community because uh, a lot of people will, will come to see these kids play because they're really, really very good. Um, let me finish up by just uh, addressing a few of the other projects that we have. Uh, we, we've talked about the music department phase two project. We've talked about the STEM electric vehicle garage project. Um, We've got a campus-wide signing project underway, and we expect to uh, meet with executive management to discuss the findings of that project next week. 
Uh, we're also looking at upgrading our academic and athletic space in the student center. Uh, this past week, also, we had home architects in to look at our electric hall over in the uh, in the AT building, and we've gotten uh, feedback from Dr. Marty Chola already on that, and we we communicated that back to the architect, so they will be further refining some of the design options that they developed. Um, and last but not least, in support of what Dr. Kelly presented and Dr. McKay presented, we've uh, we've identified or agreed upon a time frame internally with our architect and our construction manager for the construction of the uh, or reconstruction of the nursing uh, uh, space in the Decker building. Uh, we expect that the bid advertisement for that will be issued in June of 2024. That's this June. Um, the bid opening in July of 2024 uh, with approval of the bids being expected or brought to, uh, to the board of trustees in August of 2024 with construction starting shortly after that. So that is in support of uh, all the good work that they've done up to this point, but it'll be upgrading classroom space. It'll be upgraded simulation space and a number of the other needs that they have uh, in that. Um, with that, I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Questions? All right, thank you very much, Dave. Well, move on to 2.7 budget and finance, Michael. Thank you. So uh, the standard reports are in your packet. Uh, just uh, the budget forecast through the end of March is uh, uh, we're st the budget and finance still forecasting a balanced budget. Uh, still major challenges with the 1.6 million of revenue loss due to the elimination of the BAP program and the loss of about 250 uh, student FTEs, but uh, we've uh, implemented a pretty strong hiring freeze and reduced some other areas. So at this point, uh, and uh, we benefited from interest rates still being fairly high. So our investment earnings are significantly more than what we anticipated when the budget was prepared about a year ago. So, uh, so some of those aspects are uh, uh, helping us in terms of trying to maintain a balanced budget uh, for the remainder of the fiscal year. And with that, uh, I'd be willing to answer any questions anybody has. Hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, you're right. I thought you had a question. Oh, no. All right. Section 2.8. Um, or Section 2.8 in the packet has the faculty eligible for professional development recognition increment. We don't have to vote on that. No. Oh, information item. I'm sorry. Information, information item? Yeah. Information. Media report. I see. Standard report this month. <laughs> there, although you'll find a full loading link to there this mm -hmm. time around. We had some really good coverage and we did some great images from our robotics competition. We do some nice videos and other than nice. That's great. All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to section three. Move all the minutes, March 2024. Is there a motion to approve? Thank you, Anthony. Second. Second, Jim. Orban. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions or comments or revisions? Hearing none, uh, motion or all in favor, aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? All right. Uh, Finance and Facilities Committee meeting recap. Uh, we have a few things uh, at the meeting, and uh, they all pass without. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to the preferred agenda action items. 5.1, recommend approval of approval of unpaid leave of absence. Megan Benning. Motion. Thank Sorry. you, Margaret. Second, Sorry. Jim Testani. All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Recommend approval of resolution for sabbatical leaves. Motion. Um, Thank you, Clark. Second. Second. Margaret. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anyone abstained? All right, um, I, I'm uh, going to ask for a motion to go into executive session. Motion? So moved. Thank you. Second? Thank you, Tina. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? All right, thank you. We'll just ask everyone except Michael Sullivan to stay for executive session, please. <laughs> 